Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our Tuesday night Zoom session here on the Convert Club. We are welcoming Sheikh Haitim Tamim and an array of guests from Canada, from the UK and Europe and various different places. So welcome everybody. We are continuing our groundbreaking series with Sheikh Haitim Tamim on the major principles of Islam covering all sorts of very key essential important topics um, and it's also your opportunity to ask any kind of question you like uh, Islam related of course um, after we've finished all the questions on this particular topic we're going to be talking about today uh, dear Sheikh please uh, you uh, I'd love to just hand over to you and for you to start the program start your talk uh, let me just spotlight you and uh, well, let Isabel in as well uh, Bismillah, she's just back from work. Um, spotlight, there we go. Bismillah, thank you. Thank you, Christian. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadi wa alihi wa sahmi ajma'in. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman wa amalan wa fiqhan fi al-deen ya rabbil alameen. وفقنا للعمل بما يرضيك عنا وإلى غيرك لا تكلنا افتح أقفال قلوبنا بذكرك وألهمنا شكرك وجعلنا من أهل معرفتك ولا تجعلنا من الغافلين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله it's good to be back But today's topic I would like to share with you the principle of the community or being together, or togetherness, whatever you want to call it. In Arabic, we call it al-jama'ah. So the importance of the community, or togetherness, or al-jama'ah. And from this topic, we have many things related, which I will be touching upon and elaborating on uh, with you, inshallah ta'ala. <clears throat> First, Allah Azza wa Jal, created us as an ummah. So yes, we have Adam and Eve, our fathers, uh, or our parents, if you want. <clears throat> but nevertheless, they have their offspring, and then we have different communities and different tribes and languages and what have you. Ya uh, nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa untha. O mankind, we have created you from a mile from a male and a female and we've made you into tribes and nations in order to get to know each other so as you can see Allah created Adam and Eve then the communities came afterwards and these communities uh, became different nations and different tribes and so on with that in place Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to live in harmony and to uh, cooperate with one another and this is why I will just take you through a quick journey through the Quran and the Sunnah and touch upon the uh, ev evidences and the revelation from the Quran that talks about the importance of being together and helping one another but before doing this <clears throat> just uh, ask you some questions for instance in your Salah <clears throat> you read uh, Al-Fatiha in every Salah In every prayer you read Al-Fatiha We repeat many times We made probably two sessions On, on Al-Fatiha in, in this very forum In Al-Fatiha Which we repeat 17 times a day Minimum uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, As you definitely know uh, Use the plural form In Al-Fatiha so you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmin Deen. Yes, this is all singular if you want. Then the surah moves to the plural form. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. So it talks about plural. You alone, we, we worship. It's not I Although it's a conversation between us and Allah Azza wa Jal. So it could have been, um, 
you alone I worship because this is my conversation with Allah and my salah. Even if there's no congregation around me, I still use the plural form. Yes? So you alone, we worship. And from you alone, we seek help. Yes? And again, it's just instilling in, in us, in our hearts, in our minds, in our uh, verbal communication, the plural form to indicate and to tell us that community is important and being in community is important. And by uh, uh, creation, when Allah created us, we are very social beings. We are not isolated beings. We are very social. We like to socialize. So when you are alone, you feel loneliness and you feel bored. You feel all sorts of issues and stuff. So when you are with the community, with the congregation, it's a different feeling. So this is one thing. The other thing, again, in our salah, towards the end of, of our salah or in the middle of our salah, yes? So we, we mentioned in the beginning of our salah, we use the plural form, uh, which is we. Although you are more likely many times praying alone, not in the congregation, but you still say we. Just we, who is we here? It's the we... The, the community of the believers. And as, as uh, Christiana mentioned earlier, that we have uh, from Canada, from uh, across the, the Europe, uh, Europe and, and UK, Perth. America. So it's, it's the community of believers. How did they come together? What brought them together? It's the community of believers. It's their belief and the importance of belief and Iman that brings people together. So towards the end of our salah or in the middle of our salah, what do we say? We say in the tahiyyat, you know, the tahiyyat, at tahiyyatu lillah was salawatu tayyibat, assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then you say, assalamu alayna. So you are, sending salutations and greetings to whom? On us, you say. Greetings and salutations are on us. Who's us? I'm alone in my salah. Who's us? Again, the community of believers. So it's, the, it's in one salah, Allah Azza wa is training us to continuously make supplication, not only for ourselves, but for the community, the community of the believers, the community of goodness, you see? And this training, I'm pretty sure many of us did not realize this, but from now on, you will realize, inshallah. Uh, it's just training us that we are connected. We are not alone. So I'm making dua supplication for you, even if you are uh, overseas and you are making supplications and dua for me, even I'm overseas. So we are connected spiritually and connected through the revelation of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is just an opening, if you want, to the topic. And we read in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, uh, hold fast to the rope of Allah all together and do not be disunited or do not be divided yes so he's telling us that you are more likely uh, going to disagree with each other but be careful don't be disunited don't split your ranks don't destroy your unity so Allah Azza wa Jal is teaching us how to become one community 
Then the same ayah uh, in Surah Ali Amran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانًا And remember, Allah's favor upon you. When you were enemies before Islam, they were enemies killing each other. And he united your hearts by his grace and you became brothers. True brothers. And sometimes even beyond the blood brotherhood, if you want. It's, it's beyond this. And I, I can easily tell you and refresh your memory about what happened between the migrants from Mecca to Medina. Al-Muhajirun, which we call. So Al-Muhajirun, those who migrated from Mecca to Medina, the host community was Medina. Yathrib at that time used to, call, used to be called. And they, if you want, they implemented the true brotherhood and sisterhood in a textbook, if you want. And we read in the Quran some, some verses in Surah Al-Hashr, for those who are interested in Surah Al-Hashr, verse 8, 9, 10, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal talks about this experience. For the poor refugees who were expelled from their homes and their property, seeking the grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and standing up for Allah and his messenger, these are the truthful. So Allah is praising them, although they lost everything, but they won belief and iman and connection to Allah Azza wa Jal. Then Allah is praising those who hosted them. And for those who had settled in the homeland before them and had accepted faith, they loved those who migrated to them and they find no hesitation in their hearts in helping them. They give them preference over themselves even if they themselves are needy. You see, this is the beautiful reflection of bondship and brotherhood and sisterhood. And for those who read the seerah, inshallah, I hope after we finish this uh, series of the main principles of Islam, uh, we can, inshallah, talk about seerah as well. So in the seerah, the biography of Rasulullah, والسلام, the first thing when he settled in Medina, he established, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brotherhood and sisterhood, which we call it in Arabic, al-mu'akhat, mu'akhat, yeah? We made a couple of uh, lectures and programs on this a uh, long time ago, the, the, the mu'akhat program. So al-mu'akhat, it's bringing one person from Mecca, who's a migrant, and one person from Medina, and the Rasulullah made them brothers. Yes? To that extent that if one of them did die, the other one will inherit him. And then this was abrogated later. But in the early, early days of Medina, this was the, the practice. So he established, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, true bondship, true brotherhood uh, uh, between the muhajireen, the migrants, and al-Ansar, the host community, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's another topic to touch upon, but just give you a flavor on the application of uh, uh, one community, uh, one jama'ah, and Rasulullah as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned in the Quran, the importance of the community, importance of the, the congregation and the unity and so on. In, in the hadith, Rasulullah والسلام, <clears throat> beautifully said, Yadullahi ma'al jama'a, Allah's hand is with the community. It means Allah's support, Allah's uh, uh, power is with the community. So it's an encouragement for all of us to come together 
because we are strong when we are together and we are weak when we are alone. And you know the story of the, 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 the farmer and his uh, children and he wanted to deliver a lesson for them. He brought one stick and he, he asked one of them to break it and he easily uh, broke the stick. Then he asked him to put uh, two together and then break it and it was easy to break. Then he said, take a bunch of sticks, put it together and try to break it and he couldn't. And he said, this is when you are together, no one can break you. But if you are alone, it's very easy to be broken. It's a similar thing. The community are like this. And this is why Allah Azza wa continuously talks in the Quran and trains us in our salah, in our uh, recitation of the Quran, to be one community, to care for each other, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallam, he beautifully established this in, in Medina uh, between Muhajirin and Ansar. So they used to financially support each other. Uh, it, uh, uh, if you want, scientifically, they will educate and teach each other. Those who are old Muslims, they learned from Rasulullah 13 years in Mecca. Then they came to Medina, they have plenty of knowledge. They will educate the brothers and sisters of Medina who are very new to Islam. So they will support them from educational point of view. And the Ansar, the host community, will support them financially, will support them socially, will support them in different means. So you see this exchange between both of them. I give you something, you give me something. We support one another, we help each other. And this was so beautiful to see this um, example of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But a community cannot be built on emotions alone. Emotions are a good part of it, fine. But you can't build a community on emotions. So this is why we have set of rules and uh, let's say directive and standards to follow in order to establish a healthy, good community, cooperative, supportive to each other and so on, caring and harmonious and loving and so on. So we see, for instance, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed us to be together. As I recited earlier, the ayah, hold fast all together to the rope of Allah and do not be disunited. So this is the command from Allah. That's it. We need to follow this command. Now, how to execute this on the ground? We have to follow the application of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes? I'll, I'll take you through some of this. Of course, this is a huge, big topic, but I'll try to uh, dissect it and talk about uh, these pieces uh, one by one, inshallah ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallam, in, in his sunnah, uh, for instance, he said, and he's building the community, he's building the way of thinking, he's building a new practice that you love and care for others. So he said, sallam, a servant does not attain the truth of Iman until he loves for people what he loves for himself of goodness. So this is number one. You love, this is by default, you love good things for yourself. Yes? And this is what we call it selfishness uh, to a certain extent sometimes. Yeah? You love goodness for yourself, that's by default. Yeah? But not everybody loves goodness for everybody. Yeah? So Rasulullah he's teaching us how to train ourselves to love goodness for others as you love it for yourself. This is number one. So he's training us how to think. There's something good for me, yes? So I love to share this goodness with others as well. And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another hadith, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-Muslimu 
اخو المسلم the muslim is a brother of another muslim so or a sister whether he or she yeah but this is a, a general statement a muslim is a brother of another muslim so he should not oppress him now he's putting the boundaries yeah he should not oppress him nor should he hand him over to his to an oppressor so this is the boundaries you shouldn't wrong him you shouldn't oppress him you shouldn't backbite him you shouldn't envy him you shouldn't harm him yes all these are boundaries then he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam whoever fulfilled the need of his brother or sister yeah allah will fulfill his need and whoever brought his muslim brother out of a discomfort allah will bring him out of the discomforts of the day of resurrection so you see this is high reward because usually you will say what what's in it for me to to help somebody Do you know unless there's something in it for me i'm not interested of course not all people like this yes but usually the majority they 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 like the carrot that he would some people will do it because this is the right thing to do whether he is getting a carrot or not it doesn't matter but not everyone is like this yeah so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is encouraging us to help and support each other and i'll probably mention a couple of times this concept if you are doing something and it's been blocked it's not moving anywhere you tried the, the, the uh, this way it didn't work you tried that way it didn't work left right and center is not moving it's just blocked what do you do this is the remedy here this is the cure go and help somebody and allah will ease your way will facilitate what is being blocked for you and this is what the hadith is saying so if you want allah to get you out of your discomfort and agony and uh, uh, tests help somebody who is in need then allah will open the way for you and will ease the way for you try it it never disappoints you it always works Yeah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he is encouraging us to look after each other, to help each other, to be there for each other. Yes. It, as well, it helps you to be a better human. It helps you to fulfill your uh, potential. Yes. So you can do many things. But you choose to do the right thing you can do the bad thing as well you do the right thing you help someone you support someone yes so this is why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that it's so important to help others and it's an indication of selfless not selfishness so somebody who is helping others he has a good character and rasulullah was always like this alayhi wasallam he will help others all the time sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he was selfless alayhi salatu wasallam to the extent that sometimes he will forget to leave anything for himself he will distribute everything that he has sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he will forget to leave anything for himself because he relies on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is so into spreading goodness sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact one of the obligations which we have in islam you know we have the five pillars of islam you have the shahada you have the salah and siyam and zakah yeah or salah and zakah and siyam depends on the narration yeah 
Zakah itself, one of the pillars, it's an uh, it's a dimension of supporting one another. One of the dimensions of uh, supporting one another and helping one another and looking after each other. So Allah made it obligatory, not voluntary. You have the sadaqah voluntary, yes, but he made it an obligation to pay 2.5% on the overall of your wealth. To whom? To those who are needy. Yes, and this is part and parcel of looking after each other. Yes, and whilst you are doing this, so we talked about the bounties. We talked about the way of thinking. We talked about the application. And we have as well the etiquettes. How do we deliver this? How do we do this? There are etiquettes. What are these etiquettes? The Quran did touch upon this many times. The Rasulullah did touch upon this many times. Yeah. So among these things which uh, Allah mentioned in the Quran, uh, Ya ayu aladina amanu, la tuptilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha o you who believe, do not ruin your zakah or your charity by harming others. I.e., you keep telling them, you remember what we have done to you, you remember we gave you some money, you remember we supported you, you remember. So this continuous, you know, it's harmful. Yes, you do it for Allah's sake, just say nothing, ask Allah to accept it, accept it from you, and don't tell anybody about it. That's it. This is why the best form of sadaqah or charity is the secret one. Why? Because it's away from any social media, any ego, any self-interest, and what have you. It doesn't mean that you can't pay in public uh, a charity. You can, but be careful on the intention. This is the most important thing. So uh, of these etiquettes as well, uh, that you shouldn't uh, keep reminding those who you supported or helped that you remember I've done this to you, blah, 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 and then you go and, and spread it uh, all over the place and embarrass them. Don't. This is this is totally unacceptable, and it will ruin the reward of your charity. By the way, you will lose your reward. Be careful. And when you give, be it let's say if it's if, uh, uh, money, when you give, ask Allah to accept from you, and don't think that you are doing the needy a favor. No, actually, you are doing yourself a favor. So don't be that arrogant person. Yeah, I'm paying him. I'm supporting him. Yeah, ask Allah to accept it from you. What if Allah did not accept your charity? Even if it was millions, if Allah did not accept it. It will be zero in your account. Even it might be minus, not zero. Depends on your intention. So even if you have paid one pound with the right intention, with the right etiquette, it might be multiplied by 1,000, 100,000, 700,000, 1 million. Depends on the intention and the etiquettes. So the concept of supporting somebody who's in need from the community brings the community together. So the community is one body as Rasulullah explained in the hadith مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ كمثل الجسد The example of the believers in their compassion and their mercy and their cooperation is like one body. If one limb is ill, the rest of the body feels sleeplessness and fever. So the whole body is supporting each other to get well. And this is the example of the believers. The community of believers are looking after each other. 
the white blood cells coming and defending your body and defending the, this and that and uh, protecting you. So this is the community coming and supporting and helping. And one of the etiquettes as well is to praise and thank the person who has done you a favor. As in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, whomsoever does not thank people, he does not thank Allah. So if someone has done you a favor, yeah, so you should be thankful to him and uh, say there's like Allah khairan. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said, uh, if somebody has done you a favor and you cannot repay this favor, for instance, he paid you some money and you are needy and you can't repay him this money, uh, or he helped you in something which you, you will never be able to do it by your own. So what do you do to repay this in a good way? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that uh, <clears throat> you make dua for him so this is how you repay his goodness yes you repay his goodness by making a dua for him as in the hadith he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man suni'a ilayhi ma'roof faqala li fa'alihi if uh, goodness has been done to you and you've said Sorry. And you said to the one who uh, delivered this goodness to you, Jazakallahu khayran, faqad ablaga fi sana. So if you were to say to somebody, you can't repay him for his goodness, which he has done, but at least you say from the bottom of your heart, Jazakallahu khayran, may Allah reward you abundantly. This will be a, a good way of repaying his goodness. This is the minimum you can do. So it's a two-way street. It's not just one way you receive and you, you just do nothing. Yeah. Uh, although many people will not be waiting for this from you with a good intention. Yeah. But at least uh, from your side as well, because you might be arrogant. Yeah, I deserve this. You should pay me this money. You should say, Jazakallah khairan for delivering this or helping me, whether it's financial or something else. Uh, and as well, Rasulullah encouraged us to support and help the community in different forms and ways. So for instance, <clears throat> in a beautiful hadith, uh, Rasulullah uh, mentioned, لأن أمشي مع أخ لي في حاجة أحب إلي من أن أعتكف في هذا المسجد يعني مسجده صلى الله عليه وسلم شهرا It's better for me to walk with my brother رسول الله is saying this صلى الله عليه وسلم It's better for me to walk with a brother of mine to fulfill his need Yes This act is more beloved to me than to perform I think I've, which is uh, uh, to, to it's a spiritual retreat in the mosque yeah so to do this favor to a needy brother who needs my support it's better than doing one month in the mosque of Rasulullah so it tells us here uh, the importance of helping and supporting each other. In another hadith, as Tabarani narrated, uh, whoever walks with his brother to fulfill his need or to achieve something, yeah, Allah will make his feet firm on the sirat, on the day of judgment. You see all these encouragements to break these barriers of the shaitan, which many times tells us you are 
needy yourself or you can't do that much i can't help everybody i already helped somebody uh, the other day and so you know all these kind of uh, messages which you get from shaitan to stop you from supporting and helping uh, people which can be within your ability yes of course, I'm not saying that everybody and anybody uh, you should support and help. There are definitely criteria and limits and, and things to follow. Yeah. And in another hadith, uh, which is one of my favorite hadiths, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mentioned something so beautiful. <clears throat> Let me find the hadith. Where is it? Yeah. The hadith, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that uh, again, it's it's about helping and supporting your brother or your sister or somebody who's in need. So he mentioned that there are uh, treasures of good and treasures of evil. So, treasures of good and treasures of evil. And the keys for these treasures are men. So, he's saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that there are good things, yes, and bad things. And it has keys to open it, these treasures. So, Good people will open the good uh, chests and give and support others. And bad people will open the chests of evil and share it with others. So Rasulullah he is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, good news for the one whom Allah has made a key for goodness and bad news is for the one who's a key for evil. So again, he's training the community والسلام, that delivering goodness and helping people, it's an honor. It's something so important. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahlul ma'roofi fi dunya hum ahlul ma'roofi fi al-akhirah. People of goodness in dunya will be people of goodness on the day of judgment. So they will be called, O oh, people of goodness, come forward. And people of evil will be called, O oh, people of evil, come forward. Yes? So you see. Tawbah to whom Allah has made it a door to the good. Tawbah to whom Allah has made it a door to the good. And by the way, just to refresh your memory, I'm pretty sure you came across somebody like this. There is a person in a community. He is the reference of, he's like the key for goodness. Somebody has anything blocked, anything to be supported with or helped with, um, who will do this? There's X. You go to X. He will sort it for you. Yes? Whether it's in the community, in the school, in your at work. There's somebody at the mosque. There's somebody always like this. He's like the reference of goodness. People just, yeah, yeah. X will do it for you. He will uh, look after you. Yes? And the opposite is right. If there's any evil, people will say, uh, more likely this person has done it. More likely he's behind this. More likely he is like the, the, the sign of evil in the community. And there are signs of goodness in the community. So be careful not to be the sign of evil. <laughs> yes. Be careful to be the sign and the key of goodness in the community. And these people are Subhanallah, they, they have special uh, character. They are very easily uh, 
serving and you can easily get along with. They are easy mannered people, nice people. Uh, although there's um, some weakness in the hadith, but it's nice hadith to share with you. Uh, and you can relate to this from your experience as well. Uh, seek goodness from the cheerful faces. So if you've seen somebody has a cheerful face, yes, you say that I will ask this person. Or you see somebody who's like frowning and especially when you are traveling and going to to ask for something and you find somebody who's very frowning, don't ask. And you find somebody cheerful with, with a smile on his face or her face, this is more likely, sometimes it's the opposite, but the, the common practice, which I came across many times, um, it's always delivering. The people with cheerful faces are very nice, very easygoing people. And the face is the mirror of the heart, by the way. So if your heart is disturbed, you can see on your face disturbance. If your heart is full of anger and stuff, uh, that uh, full of darkness, then you can see this darkness reflecting on your heart. If your heart is full of light and, and uh, uh, goodness, you can see this reflecting on your face. So the faces are the mirrors of the hearts. And be careful when when you are in the presence of awliyaullah, the people, the special people of Allah, uh, they can read your face. They can read your face. I tell you, I came across this many times. They can read your face. Yes. So if you've done something wrong, don't visit one of them. He can tell. <clears throat> so Rasulullah Sallam is teaching us how to support and help each other. Sometimes you can't help somebody directly, but you know somebody who can help him. Would I get the reward for that? Yes, of course. You are easing his way, you are helping him or her. And this is a reflection of having a soft heart, having compassion and, and uh, good intention towards others. I know some people might say, yeah, I've done some people some goodness. They don't deserve this. Look at they have done the opposite to me. Don't say this. Don't allow the shaitan to ruin the goodness which you have done. If you've done it to be praised for it, then you don't have, you don't deserve the reward from Allah. If you've done it for Allah's sake, that's it. You got your reward from Allah. End of the story. Flip the page. Yes, I understand. Yes, it's it's good to be thanked for something good you've done, but don't do it because you want to be praised or thanked. No, don't. This shouldn't be the intention. It's good to have, but it's not must to have. So don't make this a must because it might ruin your intention. <clears throat> so Rasulullah Sallam then uh, built a community and this is part and parcel of our iman one of the main principles is to be a community yes to stand with the community to help the community community is me and you yes so when I help you you help me we help each other and we help others and others helps us and so on and so forth then we are in this atmosphere of goodness spreading goodness sharing goodness being good and this reflects on you on your heart on your behavior on your character and again it's about the company when you are with the good company you can be inspired by them and they can be inspired by you. So it's like uh, bringing all these uh, cells together that brings more energy and more support and more power to you 
as as one hand as a community of believers so uh, we see as well rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam even before islam when he was 20 years old sallallahu alaihi wasallam in mecca uh, he witnessed something uh, well known in the seerah as hilful fudul hilful fudul is the treaty of virtues uh, the long story of, of this treaty short uh, is uh, somebody came from Yemen, he sold some uh, stuff to uh, one of the leaders of Mecca and then uh, he took the stuff from him and he didn't pay him. And he said, I will not pay you. Then this Yemeni guy, he stood on the mountain and he started uh, telling about his story to the community and so on and so forth. So some of the leaders of the community came together. Uh, three of them were called Fadl. Al Fadl, son of X, Fadl, son of Y, and so on. So the three of them called uh, Fadl. Yes? So this is one of the uh, interpretations why they called it Hilf Al Fadl. Because you have three people called Fadl, the plural of Fadl, Fadl, and so on. As some other narration, it says, no, it's not because of this, because of uh, that they have done something extra, Fadl, from Fadl and Fadila, something uh, extra, which is not an obligation for them to do. So what was the treaty? These uh, leaders came together and the Prophet witnessed this, and he was part of it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although he was young. And it was the treaty has uh, 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 details and conditions that we will support the oppressed. We will until he gets his right. We will not allow this to happen in Mecca and so on and so forth. So they mentioned many uh, clauses in in that treaty. And Rasulullah he talks about this later. He says if. I was invited now for this, I will be part of it. After he received his, his uh, Prophet, after he became a messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, if, if I were to be invited to this now, I will uh, join. Because it was a, a treaty to support uh, justice, to support fairness, to support uh, goodness in the community. So this is part and parcel of, as well of uh, supporting one another. And I will finish with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, support your brother, whether he is uh, uh, an oppressor or an oppressed. And this is a statement the Arab knew before Islam. Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluman. Support your brother and uh, even uh, whether he is, he is an oppressor or an oppressed. Then the companions, when Rasulullah mentioned this before them, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we understand we support our brother when he is oppressed. But how do we support him when he's an oppressor? Rasulullah wasallam says, to stop him from oppressing others. Yes, this is how you support your brother. You support him by stopping his oppression. This is how you support him. You don't support him going and doing more oppression. No. So, as you can see, it's a very important concept, the concept of uh, uh, being in a congregation, being in jama'ah, being in a community. The, the prayers itself, yes, you have the congregational prayer five times a day in the mosque. You have the Friday prayer. You have the Eid prayer. So it's all bringing the community again and again, the janazah prayer, all of this congregational prayer. Yes? So it's creating this, uh, this uh, uh, support, this net of support, and this net of uh, safety net for everyone. So if you were to fall, you fall under this very net of the community, which will support you and help you and so on. Yeah? So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to, to be united and to understand the 
concept of uh, unity of the Ummah and how to uh, establish this practice and how to understand the boundaries and the etiquettes. Ami, I will open the floor for your questions. Please, if you have any question, ask. I mean, uh, thank you very much, Ya Sheikh, for this beautiful uh, explanation and uh, making us you know, aware of the concept of the community and the importance of this um, in Islam. Um, so you're saying support your brother, even if he's an oppressor, by trying to stop his oppression, um, trying to coax him, etc., probably teach him and this and that. But what if it's uh, uh, very bad or, you know, if it's a thief or something like that, would you, where is the limit? Where do you stop the supportive dialogue and the persuasions and go to the law or or other <laughs> and yeah, it depends case by case but this is the concept the concept is uh in order to apply the con uh, apply the concept you need to have the details so if you have a detail the details of this case then we can go through the details and say this is how you stop it this is how you minimize it this is how you deal with it otherwise of course you have the court and this is by the way it's not far from the hadith as it's in in the hadith itself the way you stop the oppression of your brother is to take him to court if this requires uh, uh, this is a requirement to stop him then all be it that's fine why not but again you have different levels you don't go to step three before doing and executing one and two so again, depends on the case. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely understand. Sorry, I just need to mute myself for one second. Sorry. Yeah, we don't have internet here at the moment uh, for my 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 guest here, and uh, I just realised he can't switch off the router because then we would lose our session. Um, anyway. So, uh, yeah, uh, very, very uh, important point, point, so many good points. How are the, how are the communities important? So, many, so much isolation uh, we're suffering in the West. Um, the Muslim community is holding strong against us with the extended family system, sadly also breaking up a little bit, but uh, by, by far it's not as bad as... Um, Yes, our Ummah is broken Ummah, it's not united Ummah, otherwise we are 2 billion and we cannot stop the massacres yet in, in Palestine and see how weak we are. Yeah, we are still, we are also broken up. Yeah. You're right, but on a personal level, Muslims are still more together, I, I, I think the family unit is still more yes. intact than uh, with the West. I agree with you, yes, but they are trying actually and uh, they have done a lot to destroy the family and they are continuing this process of destroying the family. But Who is we, they? we need to protect ourselves against this. Who is they? It's, it, it goes without saying. You <laughs> know who is they. Do you think the Abraham Accords are part of that, that uh, Abolish Friday is a holy day, no, uh, no, family no, day. No, 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 it's, it's beyond this. It's beyond this. This is just one one part of the jigsaw, but there are many pieces, many pieces, which the, the new legislations, this, that, and the other, the definition of family, who is the family, and all these kind of things. It is, it is destroying the, the concept of family. It's destroying the community. And see how how weak we are. It's 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 called now Europe, the old continent, hmm. because you don't have new uh, babies. You don't have uh, reproduction anymore as it used to be. You have very minimum minimum number because the family is destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and thank you for highlighting. Somebody commented on the point uh, of, of in the Fatiha, the we. Uh, that's uh, and it's lovely to 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 understand that this actually links to the to the community of believers worshiping. 
it's another sign of how the community is so important. So let me go to the chat. Um, yeah, see, so she's saying thank you for that. That's Margaret from Canada. Also, the work from home is isolating people. Yeah, however nice it is, but it is also isolating people. Yeah, true. Yeah. Any any particular questions? Um, any particular points? Anybody else wants to raise? So, so what was the solution? The solution is following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which he mentioned how to become a, a united community. So, starting from your salah and understanding your salah that this is this is the we community, the we believers, going to the mosque, praying in congregation, going to Friday. Uh, supporting those who are around you whom you they need your support so this is this is how we rejuvenate the the community again rather than we stay just isolated we stay alone we we don't say good morning to our neighbors and and so on mm -hmm. so breaking these barriers uh, going back to the practice of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is how you establish and rejuvenate the community do you do think teaching community in school would be a good idea to actually have a subject that teaches people about community in an unreligious way before you bring it into religion? Do you think teaching people about the essence of community is a good idea? Because they don't teach community. No one teaches community to young people, the importance of community, the strengths, the attributes, the the, the positives versus the negatives. The, the no, there's no lecture, lecturing. Yes, yes. It's, it's a good a good thing to to start with, to be honest, because um, it's it's a common sense. We are social beings as humans. Yeah. We're God created us as social yeah. beings. Yeah, and we're analog. We're not digital, and we're being pulled into a digital world. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Any comments? Such a beautiful session. It's always so heartwarming, your sessions. It always brings out good feelings and good reminders, you know, with your hadith and Quran quotes, etc. And, um, you know, personal tips, how we can unblock ourselves, how we can move forward, helping others. Does this, this, this I presume, is uh, to help um it doesn't just apply to muslims help any human being for example or even an animal yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah as muhammad priest Bupanim was sent as a mercy to all Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes. mankind yeah not just to the muslims yeah exactly um yes anybody else has a question perhaps um if not related to this beautiful topic any other questions you want to use the opportunity of speaking to a real scholar um, very special scholar, or is everything clear? <laughs> everything is clear. Oh, we have a raised hand, Sondhill. Over, the, over to you. Yes, assalamu alaikum. I was, I was just thinking with the, you know, with the, with the face being the, the mirror of, of the heart. Um, I've, I've recently been in Morocco and going to the mosque and. You know, I, I, I've had in the past gotten really quite sort of irritated with being stared at because obviously I don't look Moroccan and then the clothing isn't this or it isn't that. And and this time I thought, you know, let's try something, let's try something different. So when I noticed ladies staring, which they did, I thought, OK, just smile, just smile at them. And that that was such an icebreaker because that sort of look of like mm, uh, with a smile it just it just worked and I tried it you know I tried it on numerous occasions and it's worked every single time in those in those situations so instead of me getting irritated because somebody's sort of looking at me like who's she um, you know it would it would it would flip it completely so I just wanted to share that. Great, and this is one of the practices of Rasulullah and he recommended this practice to the community. He said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طلق. 
don't belittle any of the good deeds which you might be able to do, even if it was to meet your brother with a cheerful face. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. So each time you smile, you are cashing in your account new reward. For me to do that would be a big thing uh, with my brother, but uh, yes, interesting. Oof. My real brother, that is. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. Why not? The Rasulullah taught us how to, to spread goodness and a smile on the face. This was his uh, his appearance. Those who describe Rasulullah, they said, Kana daim al he was always with a smile on his face. Always. So whenever you look at him, he has a smile on his face. That's lovely. But again, it probably depends, you know, as you said before, it depends on who and, um, you know, the situation. You have some exceptions, but this is, this is the norm. Let's not get into the exception. Exactly. The norm. Generally, the norm yeah. is to have a smile on your face. Not not to be Mr. Grumpy or Mrs. Grumpy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. So nice. As yeah, uh, thank you so much. Um, if there are no other questions, then we might as well uh, close this very beautiful session with a dua. Great. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Thank you for such an, an enlightening and touching lecture, as always. And we look forward to seeing you again in two weeks' time, inshallah. And now let's close our lovely session with your dua. Thank you. Okay. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا أرحم الراحمين forgive us our sins our shortcomings our mistakes keep us on the straight path يا الله strengthen our community يا الله unite our community يا الله bring our community together يا رب العالمين يا أرحم الراحمين forgive our sins our shortcomings forgive our parents our offsprings, our spouses, our loved ones. Salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amin, amin, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.